This video is looking at the 2013 higher level question B2, axonometric projection. Question, uh, like all other ones, follows much the same format. Uh, soccer is one of the most popular team sports in the world. The 3D graphic on the right shows a set of typical soccer goal, uh, goal posts. Figure B2 uh, shows an incomplete diametric projection of similar goal posts using the axonometric axis method. The elevation and end view are shown in their required positions. A pictorial view of the goalpost is also shown. The first two parts of this follow the standard, um, same as every other question, draw the axon metric axis x, y, and z, and the isosceles triangle a, b, c. It's isosceles because we're told that it's diametric projection. Part b is to draw the elevation and end view orientated as shown and complete the axon metric projection. Part c of this, although it looks quite wordy and quite long, is quite straightforward, and we'll come to that later on. So a ball is positioned on the ground at point F. For a, kick po um, for a kick, point F is 9 metres away from the goal line and is located in the direction shown. The path of the ball uh, after it is kicked is a parabola, which reaches a maximum height of 6 metres, having travelled uh, a horizontal distance of 6 metres. By drawing the parabola in the end view or otherwise determine whether the ball goes under or over the crossbar. Ignore the radius of the ball. Scale for this question is 1 is to 100. So looking at the board, I have the start of this set up with my iso isometric axis set up. I've got axis Y, X and Z, and points A, B and C also found. I've drawn in, I've extended my X axis out here, gone perpendicular to it, um, and then I'm going to draw in my semicircle here now. So the semicircle, like in the other questions that I've shown in previous videos, semicircle drawn here where that semicircle intersects the line coming from the axis gives me the edge view of my um, axis so the edge view of my planes of reference and my end view is going to sit inside here in this do the same thing for the elevation so drawing my semicircle where the semicircle cuts through the y-axis this time is the corner, the edge view of my planes. So what we're going to do first, I'm going to draw the end view. Um, we're given the distance from here, how far out that is. It's not directly given, but we are told that it's a radius 4 meters. So that will be 40 millimeters out along this way. So parallel to this line would be vertical and where that vertical line that we've just drawn intersects through the green line the line where the semi the diameter of the semicircle that is going to give me the height for the vertical piece at the back that's also the center of the radius 4 so we can draw our radius 4 meter um, arc in here now radius 4 arc that goes up there somewhere. Now if you notice and you have to look closely at the question for this, there's a one meter horizontal piece up on top that is, um, so this arc does not continue all the way up to there. So from here to here to the top of the arc is not four meters, it's less than that. So we need to find where at one meter inside that looks like. So we're going to again go parallel to uh, the line here at the back and project that one meter line up until it touches or cuts through our arc. Now what we can do is from there horizontal and by horizontal I mean parallel to the, the line down here at the bottom that gives us the top of the arc the top of the goal posts our arc can be drawn in darkened in as given and then this coming down along here is the front of it. So the height goes from this point, which is just below where the arc spins, where the arc cuts through that vertical line, so it's just below it, that's an important uh, point to note. Off out here uh, in our elevation, we're told that it's 85 millimeter or 85 meter, 8.5 meters, which is 85 millimeters. Again, going parallel to the vertical line of the axis, or what would be Thank you. 
we need to work out the height. That height is taken from our end view, so from the ground line up to that horizontal line that we just found a moment ago. And that marks up that height for us here. And that is the elevation of this view. So the next part of this now we're going to draw the axonometric axis. We're going to project all our lines down in here. It's going to do a few pieces together. So parallel to the z-axis, I'm bringing lines down from the elevation. So that will give me this line coming down along here, which is going to be the base. And this one up here up on top gives me that flat horizontal piece up there. So corners coming then down from the end view, that's going to be one point of it. The front corner, if you go parallel to the x-axis, This front corner comes down along here, intersects at that point. Also, for the one coming from the opposite side of this, so there. And to get the top of this now, that line comes in along, giving me this point. And then the horizontal piece, the one meter piece, comes back a little bit further to there. So this is vertical of this one. back that way just a small bit. Going to have the same here on the opposite side, so the opposite side so I can project down just one more line. Needs to come down for this one. So that gives me this little piece here and that joins the point I've already located down on the ground. So that there is the front and top of the goal posts. And now we've just one more piece here that needs to go into it, which is the height for um, that small vertical line at the back. So that is located, so this is a vertical line. It's going to be taking a line parallel to the x-axis from the end view from this point back here. This point comes down into the axonometric view, intersecting it there. So as these are goalposts, they're open, so we can see what's going on on the inside of them. So. There's dark lines running across down here, over this way, and up at the same height as this here for this back corner. Now the next part of this is to locate a number of points for heights um, to draw our curve. So we'll have two curves, curve here on this side and on this side. And to do that we're going to take heights which I can then copy over on this side. So we're up 20, uh, we're up a small bit here first, so I'm gonna come up maybe 30 off the ground and 45 off the ground. So they're just known heights, they're, doesn't matter what heights you take, they're up to you. But I'm gonna take 35, 30 and 45, so that gives me a point here on the curve and the 45 gives me this point here on the curve. So I've got point one, two, three, and four. Gonna locate those same points now over here in the uh, elevation. So point one, we already have down here, so I don't need to worry about that one. Point two is up 30 millimeters. And then 45 for point three. So this is point two, three, four is at the very top. Find them also on the other side just to make things a bit easier in a moment.
that's two, three, and four. So just a quick recap on that. The curve here, the heights, I just took a height of 30. That gives me a height there for that curve. Same height here for point three. That was up a height of 45. That's the same height off over on this part. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna project these points down into our axonometric view, the same way that we have for every other point. So take point two first. Point two is projected down this way. Bringing that from the end view, where they intersect, gives me the point that I'm looking for. This is point two. Do the same thing for point three. This point three is found the same way, brought down, projected down. It's point three. So on the right, the left hand side of this, drawing the best curve that I can through each of these points gives me that. Now we're going to do the same thing for the right hand side of the goalposts. So point two brought down. That intersects with the line coming from point two up here that we've already brought down. There's point two. Point three the same. That's this point, point three, and point four. So joining points together. and that joins up to point four. Now there's one other line that needs to be accounted for, which is kind of the extreme generator line, so where the curve disappears. And that is found, it's the widest point up here on the curve. So what would angle would split our curve, uh, it's taking this point here. So I can just project that one down. And that gives me points just at the very back of where, where the, the net is on the goalpost. So that completes part B, draw the elevation and end view orientated as shown. So look at the question again now for just for part C. A ball is positioned on the ground um, at a point F for a kick. Point F is 9 metres away from the goal line and is located in the direction shown. The path of the ball after it is kicked is a parabola which reaches a maximum height of 6 metres having travelled a horizontal distance of 6 metres. By drawing a parabola in the end view or otherwise, determine whether the ball goes under or over the crossbar. As they told you to draw a parabola in the end view, the otherwise bit is kind of just giving you an option, but they've told you to draw a parabola in the end view, so that's what we're going to do. So point F in our view is here, uh, but that doesn't really bear any importance to us um, in this part. We don't need to do any more inside the axonometric view. It is all out here in the, um, the end view. So we're told it's nine meters away from point F. Point F is on the goal line. So 9 meters is 90 millimeters, so we'll project out here 90 millimeters. And we're going to draw a parabola. So after traveling 6 meters, it reaches a maximum height of 6 meters, which means that that is the vertex of the parabola. So all we're going to do is we're going to use the rectangle method that we have to draw a, uh, a parabola here. Maximum height here of 60. maximum height of 60 millimeters or 6 meters so 60 millimeters that's the vertex and we can draw our rectangle so divide this uh, up this side of it up into a number of equal parts I'll just use 20s divide the other side up into the same number of equal parts. I can use 20s here also and label them. So 0, 1, 
two, three, zero, one, two, three. This is the axis of our parabola. So if a line, if uh, this line down here, it's cut by the axis, our lines are gonna go parallel, which means the other ones, the other lines have to join to the vertex. This is a point on the curve, this is a point on the curve. So what the curve is, is the plot, uh, or the path that the ball takes after it's kicked. So we're drawing in our parabola, coming down along here. And that's one half of the parabola, but the other half of it is the important one, because then we can see if the ball goes over or under the crossbar. So we just need to copy the parabola onto the opposite side. So that's that point. Copy them around our axis. So point here and point here. So this line here, our parabola, is the path that our ball goes when it's kicked and it goes under the crossbar. So we can clearly see here that the path of the ball travels beneath the level of the crossbar. So that completes the question. So the final part of that question, in our end view, although it's three paragraphs long, all that you're required to do is draw a parabola with um, half the base is equal to 60 and the maximum height that we see here is also uh, 60 millimeters, six meters. Uh, so we draw our parabola using the rectangle method. The path of the parabola passes under the crossbar. So that is that question. So that completes the 2013 higher level question B.